ladies and gentlemen, sports fans, I have Mr. Zach Nelson, CEO of NetSuite with me. Zach, great to see you. How are you? Great, thank you. You're very good. Now, you've been talking about C-Suite um, as, as the next, as the next um, what did you call it? Next one? Well, one? so, you know, the Sweet Commerce initiative that we put forth really to enable our customers to turn themselves into cloud businesses, expose their operational systems directly to their customers over yep. the web or over the phone, you know, it's a new it's a new initiative. We've had a lot of success in e-commerce uh, today, but I really think the next iteration of this technology, which we're calling Sweet Commerce, will be as big a business, or maybe even a bigger business than the One World business has been for us. Wow. And you know how much One World's been a driver over the last few years. Well, it's three hundred million revenue now. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's a big. You know, it's some quarters. You know, it's forty percent of the new business sales, and you know, it goes to typically larger companies because you're doing multi-company mm -hmm. financial consolidation. Mm -hmm. So. That's been just a, a huge driver, and I believe what we're doing with Sweet Commerce solves a major problem that's vexing most, most companies today. Explain that problem, because so you went through it and there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah, the problem I think companies are struggling with is, you know, everyone, the consumer's expectations of what it means to do business with someone, whether that be directly with a company yeah. or in their role as a business doing commerce with another business, has changed radically. Where a simple website used to do, now people expect to be able to transact business wherever they are mm -hmm. on whatever device they're on. Mm -hmm. And there have been a lot of individual systems, sort of adjunct systems that have been designed to deal with some of the display issues with those, mm -hmm. those problems, demand, wear, venda. But the real problem is not just the display technology to expose, to, to do transactions, but also the operational systems mm -hmm. to manage the transactions once they happen. You know, inventory needs to be shipped, Products need to be yep. reordered, invoices need to be done, recurring billing needs to be created. And so we found ourselves in a very interesting place in the, in the sense that we built a business management system that has a lot of the core functionality that everyone needs to transact business, be it business to consumer, hey, we can do credit card tra transactions, or business to business, hey, we can do terms-based selling on sort of the, mm -hmm. the simplest level. Um, and what we've done here now is enabled really our customers for the first time to take their core operational system, i.e. their ERP, CRM system, right. and expose it directly to customers via the web, via the phone, via whatever interface wherever they are. customers have, wherever they are, whatever their uh, application is. And you know, historically what's had to happen is you've had to have an intermediary system, take an extract from SAP, put it in another system, and now display it mm -hmm. to a consumer, or put it in another system and now display it at retail. And so you've had to create multiple sets of infrastructure to deal with multi-channel selling. Mm -hmm. What Sweet Commerce effectively does is now you have a single system, mm -hmm. that Sweet Backend system, that can be exposed to any channel of commerce with the appropriate UI. Okay, so when I think of this, my first thought is mobile because everybody's talking about mobile and you described yours as a, as a headless system because again, when you were talking about it, I'm thinking, hell, how's he dealing with Android and blah, 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 blah. How's that gonna work? Yeah, so what we've done really, as we look at, so we've had a big e-commerce business. You know, if mm. you look at, we had 4.8 million unique logins last month. That's the fifth largest e-commerce platform on the planet. You know? right. Amazon and eBay being number one or two. That's the sort of scale of our customers using us as an e-commerce platform today. So as we looked at re-architecting that for the next generation, uh, you know, our, our philosophy and our approach was we can't predict what the next user interface is going to look like because UIs change so rapidly. Twitter is suddenly a user interface into commerce. Sure. Facebook, phone obviously, the iPhone's one. The Android, uh, we had a question today about will voice be a part of the ordering process. Mm. So the challenge we saw was there's no way to anticipate what the channel of preference will be for either a B2C world or a B2B world. And so we set about architecting a system where effectively, as you say, we call it headless commerce. Basically, you can put any user interface you want mm. on top of the NetSuite business operation system. So the only thing I have to worry about as a developer, putting up my techie hat on for two ticks, yeah. is, is dealing with that UI, that's pretty much all I've got to deal with? Well, there's two things that we, there's two major changes that we've made in, the, in NetSuite's architecture to address this next generation of commerce. One is, we basically decoupled the front end display logic from the back end business processing logic. Right. Before, in our old e-commerce model, they were pretty tightly coupled. And so that enables you, if you're, if you're a brand conscious uh, company, to control every pixel on the screen, which they want to do. They want to control right. every, every piece of that, as well as adapt it to where the pixel is displayed, right? A, a phone, an iPad, uh, a computer. The second thing we've done, and this is a very important piece of it, you know our sweet cloud architecture really allows you to customize how data moves internally in your, in your yep. firewall, if you will, inside your business. 
And all of that capability had not been exposed to our commerce technology before. We've now opened up all of our Sweet Cloud APIs to face the customer. Oh, really? Wow. So now, not only can you control every pixel, you can control exactly what's happening when the customer does this or that. And so, in, um, essentially turning your business process logic and making it programmable, but customer facing is the second big part of this. Everyone wants to customize yeah, the experience yeah, yeah, yeah. a customer has, depending on, yep. is it a B2B customer, is it a B2C customer? Have they ticked this box? Have they ticked that box? Oh, do this, that, or the other thing. And so having it, having a platform in effect, that's not just a business management platform, but a commerce platform enables you to customize that user experience. Okay, let me get this 100% straight. What you've effectively done is turn the commerce engine into a commerce platform. Exactly. We call it commerce as a service, really. You know, yeah. where you historically you had software as a service, we were ERP as a service. Now, effectively, what we what we liken this to, if you look at your best commerce experiences, yep. it's a company called Apple or a company called Amazon. Mm. And behind those experiences, in fact, you can't get a human on the phone at Apple, right? The, no, no, that's, no. So the machine is the CRM experience. The machine is so intelligent it knows how to recognize you when you go onto their site, when you go into their retail store. Yeah. So in effect, what Apple and Amazon had to do, they had to build a rich, integrated back-end system sure. that un knows who the customer is regardless of touch point. In effect, that's what we've built with NetSuite. We built a business management system, yeah. and now we've effectively enabled our customers to put any user interface they want on top of that so that they can deliver the experience that's appropriate for that customer's device, all the while recognizing who the customer is, what rights and privileges they have, how they buy. And so we're, I, I say we're, turn, we're giving everybody the opportunity to be Apple. We're giving everybody the that's opportunity. A, that's a big ambition. It is. And I, but I, but you know, it has the, it has, fortunately, it has the benefit of being true. You know, you look at it, <laughs> which I like. It's easier, it's easier to keep the story straight when that's the case. Um, uh, you look at our 2,800 customers yep. today using us. That's exactly why they do use us, primarily on an e-commerce channel, because the system recognizes the customer and now can automate the interaction without that customer, without a human involved. Mm -hmm. Much better customer experience, seamless, you know, frictionless commerce experience in the language of the old web. Mm -hmm. uh, so both parties are happy, the customer mm -hmm. and the business managing the relationship and selling the product. Sounds like you've got business for the next year or two, doesn't yeah, it? I'll, I'll be, I have the Permanent Employment Act with NetSuite. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Zach. Great. Much.